Pokemon Go leapt onto the scene just last month, garnering well over 100 million downloads since its launch in early July. One of the reasons for its huge success is that it merges the real and virtual world, opening up a new, a whole new business model and highlighting the business potential for virtual and augmented reality, a market which Goldman Sachs estimates will be worth just over $150 billion by the year 2022. Well, joining us to tell us a little bit more about this opportunity and maybe find a few Pokemons here in studio is Stephen Ambrose, who's the Chief Executive of Strategy Works, and Jan Vermeulen, Senior Journalist at My Broadband. Gentlemen, so good to have you both with us here today. Good Thanks to be having here. Us on. Let's pick up with Pokemon Go and, and this fad and this craze. Clearly, Pokemon itself as a, an institution and even with uh, regard to the game is uh, nothing new on the market from what I understand, but it's the augmented reality that makes it you know, have a competitive edge. What's the difference here between virtual reality and augmented reality, and does it really matter in the case of Pokemon? Well, absolutely. Virtual reality immerses you, the viewer, the participant in a completely new world, wherever that world may be. It may be riding the rapids, you know, traveling to space. But the fact is virtual reality is all encompassing and it involves you 100% in a new experience in a new environment. Augmented reality adds elements of unreality to reality. Mm -hmm. So in the case of Pokemon, suddenly your little Pokemons pop up in your lounge in the studio, wherever you are, overlaid on the existing reality that's out there, using a camera or whatever. So augmented reality has perhaps a lot more application than virtual reality, because you have to step outside of yourself to be virtually not there. Mm. Uh -huh. And to just pick up on what you said about, uh, you know, po in this, this augmented reality uh, boosting the Pokemon Go craze, I, I actually disagree with that, uh, because the augmented reality aspect of the Pokemon Go game is actually something you can disable. And if you get serious about the game, you do disable it. So what's, what's catapulted the game into the, the success that, it, that it's become has very little to do with the augmented reality aspect of it. It just has to do with the, the gameplay and with the fact that it's Pokemon. Mm. Um, but what it has done successfully is it's kick-started conversations around augmented reality and virtual reality um, as potential uh, business investments. Uh, and it's, uh, it's really started like this, this whole fresh look um, at the technology uh, from a business perspective uh, that, that maybe wasn't there before. So then where does the opportunity lie then from a business perspective to engage in augmented reality and really make a significant profit out of it, even if it doesn't take you to the next level of Pokemon <laughs> Go? <laughs> I think the key thing to remember is that like every new technology, it's built on the possibilities that exist at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So the whole issue of, of augmented reality, the whole issue and what highlights, what the Pokemon game highlights is the fact that there are 100 million people connected with a smart device that is capable of combining the camera, combining data, combining a game that's hosted and served from another planet almost, um, all in one little handheld device, which allows opportunities for advertising, for marketing, for all sorts of different elements that can be monetized. And that's exactly what this brings. And that's where the business opportunity lies. Not so much in augmented reality as its own platform, but what it can add to other platforms and what it can bring to various other uh, models or business models in that regard. Mm. In Pokemon Go's case specifically, um, there's been a deal with, between McDonald's and the creators of Pokemon Go in Japan. So every McDonald's in Japan will get a Pokestop or a gym. And so the idea then is that Pokemon Go players will be attracted to these points and play at, at McDonald's and then hopefully spend some money at McDonald's for coffee or McFlurries or whatever the case might Here's be. Here's the interesting stat. They had a 27% increase in turnover for the few weeks that they've been live That's on the Pokemon Go platform. In so terms it of shows it works. In terms of augmented reality itself though, what uh, probably the biggest player in the space at the moment, uh, or the, the person or the, the company generating the most business interest at the moment, um, uh, from, a, from a broad audience perspective, I should qualify this properly, is Microsoft with its HoloLens. So, uh, and Microsoft has been pushing HoloLens uh, as an enterprise technology um, you know, trying to enable enterprises to pick up this technology and develop st tools for it because um, they're really trying to promote the HoloLens. So mm -hmm. they want companies to develop computer-assisted design tools um, and, and all kinds of other, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, tools that we've got currently develop interfaces for them that work in augmented reality. 
because uh, Microsoft believes that it, it's a boon to collaboration. How do then do companies need to ensure that this does become a sustainable issue, which can drive profits for more than uh, three weeks of when you launch a particular project? Because I think that's the concern with some of these technology elements is that it becomes a bit of a fad and dies out after some time. In many ways, that's exactly the case. There's no question that the Pokemon Go has suddenly brought virtual reality and augmented reality into the public discourse and into the lexicon of what's going on out there. But most businesses will find that it's a lot harder to incorporate those elements into the everyday things that they do. Mm -hmm. But it's part of the whole drive to mobility. It's part of the whole drive to externalizing their operations in, in clever and intelligent ways. So, for example, um, a car company can use it to help diagnose issues by overlaying technical data over a motor that they're looking at. Mm. So you don't have to run back to your phone and look up something or get out a manual and look out something by simply looking at a, an alternator, for example. It'll tell you which model it is, what could potentially be wrong. So it can create efficiencies, but that's going to take a while before these companies can build those into their processes in a way that makes financial sense. And a lot of companies are looking at it. And I think we're going to see an explosion of the overlay of data. And that's coming back to my original you know, supposition is that this is part of the mobile data revolution. Yeah. Simply by being connected and being able to overlay this information across the real world to, for museums, for example. So there are a lot of different ways that companies can find to enhance their operations, to enhance what they do, and to make what they do smarter and a lot more efficient. And that's where augmented reality is going to play an enormous part. And HoloLens, through Microsoft, is, an, is, an, is a perfect example of that. That's exactly the vision that they have. Yeah. And it's not so much a gaming vision, which is big. There's no question that gaming is huge. But from a pure business and from a pure sort of financial point of view, mm -hmm. the overlay of data intelligently on the real world is a huge opportunity for most businesses to improve their operations and to make more money. Sounds like we're just touching the tip of the iceberg Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Gentlemen, unfortunately we have to leave it there for today. We've run out of time, but fantastic conversation, which uh, I think will continue clearly into the future as it develops. But a big thank you to both Stephen Ambrose, who's the CEO of Strategy Works, and Jan Vermeulen, senior journalist at My Broadband.